So sometimes the requirement might be for users to enter multiple data to or submit multiple data to your data source. Now there's a couple of approaches that you can take here. One and a typical approach would be to create an input form and the user can enter their data, click submit, and that saves the data to the data connection. The other way to do it would be to use something like a repeating section. The great thing about that approach is that you're now doing everything in memory, which is going to be a lot faster. You're not committing the record one at a time. And, um, you know, with one click, you're saving all of those changes out to, uh, out to your data source. Now, um, which obviously is going to be a lot faster. So I've got a blank application here in front of me. And the first thing I'm going to do is just connect uh, my data source. And I'm using the CDS, I'm going to put a blank, a um, blank gallery down. And now the first thing I want to do is actually, even before I work with that gallery, the first thing I want to do is on app load. I want to do a clear collect because we're going to be working with collections here in memory first before we commit them out to our data source. So our collection, I'll just call it um, data input for our collection. Because we are going to be submitting this collection to our data connection or our data source, we need to make absolutely sure that each column in our, in our collection is identical to the column names that are in our data source. So if I go over to the, my, into, uh, my the CDS and my entity, I go and find my library here. I can see all my fields. So the fields I want to add are author, um, genre, name, and published. And, and they have specific names in the CDS. And, you know, if this is Azure, these might be, you know, the CDS puts this little prefix in front of our column name. So I need to make sure I add those. But when you're, say, if you're working with a SharePoint list or an Azure table, you may not necessarily have to worry about this. Or you have to make sure that your column names are exactly the same in your collection that they are in your data connection. And, you know, it'll become clear later why that's the case. Right. So this is where I'm going to initialize my collection and here in here. I'm going to start with um, um, CRD96 name. I'm just going to initialize that to blank. CRD96 author. And again, remember these are just the how my column, these are my column names in, in my uh, entity. And the next column I want to add is genre and last one I want to add published and that's going to be a date. So let's just initialize that to the day. Okay. So if we just run that, we should have our collection initialized. Now in here in our gallery, we want our gallery to be pointing to our collection. And we're going to add some fields in here. So let's add text input. And this is going to be default value will be this item. And this is name. So let's just put a label on that. And that's going to be my name of my book that I'm going to be inputting. The next field I'm going to be, I need is I need another text field. Let's label again. going to be author and the default will be this item author and we want an input of a date picker that's published I think my last one I had here was genre. So that I'm going to make that a drop down. Which 
chuck another label on there. Now genre, I'm just going to add a few different options here. Make the first one the dummy one or placeholder. Will be a science fiction fantasy biography biography and let's just say non -gen. okay so we need a couple of buttons here so one let's first add inside of here let's add a delete icon so we can remove records from our collection and when we hit that we just want to do a remove and we want to remove from the data input collection and we just want to remove this item that's our effectively our delete and we need to add another button up here outside of our gallery to add a new record to our collection so let's just grab another icon and do an add on this button okay so this button will add a new record so we just want to do a collect data input and we want to add a new record this is going to be very similar to our clear collect so let me just grab that in here paste that in instead of collect we're going to make that a collect and what collect does it increments or adds and sorry it appends a new record to the end of our collection right so that that's us adding a new one let's just quickly test that yep add new go up and down and we can delete great all right so that's all working so we need a um we need to do a couple of things here so every time we make a uh, an update to one of these fields we want to update our collection so um, rather than having sort of like a save button and have to worry about hiding and showing buttons and you know that all that sort of grid editing sort of type of stuff because we're working in memory we can just do this really fast in memory and patch these values as we go along so let's set that up so the the property we want to uh, effect here is on change so let's do it with the name field first so when name field is changed we want to do a patch and we're going to patch our our collection and we just want to patch um CR the 96 underscore name, which is our um, name field inside of our collection. And we just want to take, um... okay, so I'm rushing ahead a little bit fast here. Let me just quickly name these fields, which I didn't do before. So let's just call this it's the name. This was a drop down. Genre. That a capital. Date picker was date picker published. And that is author. So this is text field. Okay, so really important that as you add these fields in that you um that you name them correctly because then you'll just lose track of stuff later on. It just makes life a lot easier as you're adding fields to your application. Make sure you name them as you go. So, right, let's get back to it. So we're doing our patch and we're doing our update whenever we make a change to any of these fields. So we're going to patch this and we're, we're saving the name dot text value. And um, we actually want to save it to this item. All right. 
So let me just copy that because I'm basically going to put that exact same function, exact same statement into every on change. Almost the same. So let's go on change. But this time for the author field, we want to do author. So we're updating the author. We just format that so we can do that properly. And we want to give it the value from txt author field dot text. So that's the actual field inside of that section. All right. So next we want to do the publish field. So on change, we want to change that to published. And of course we want to take the published. Now we don't want dot text because this is a date picker. We want selected date. And the last one we want to do here is that should be genre. Here is on change. Genre and this is DD genre. Selected text well selected value. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. If I run that, we just delete that record from the collection. If we go back out and have a look at collections here, we can see that our collection data input, which is what we're working with, is completely empty. If I go back to the app and run it, add a new record, just put test here, test, select whatever, and then add a new one. Test two, author test two. Again, we'll just make that selection. Cancel out of that. Go back to file collections. We can see, we've automatically added a couple of records to our collection. So that's great. So the last thing we just need to do is add um, a button that will submit our, once we're happy with all the data that we've added and all the changes we've made in memory, we want to commit those new records to our data source. So we need a submit button. Let me go ahead and grab that. And just use this save, great. And in here, all we need to do on select is select. And if we've set up all of our columns correctly, so if our columns in our in our collection line up with our data source correctly, this should just automatically work without any error. So we're going to collect to our data source, which is my library. And all we want, we want to feed that my library, we want to feed it our, our collection. So if I run that, let's just kill these. And let's add, well, if we, let's just double check our collection blank. Excellent. If we go into my library, oh, we are already in my library. We go data and we can see there's no records in my data table. So if this was a SharePoint list, you'd go to SharePoint, have a look at the page. You'd see no records there. Or if it was an Azure database, you wouldn't have any records currently in your Azure table. We go to back to our application. And we run that. I'm going to add a new record here. And again, I'm working in memory now in, in, and I'm saving and recording to the collection in memory. I'm not transmitting or doing anything to the data source at the moment. So let's put a couple of books that I've recently, well, I haven't re that's not true. I haven't recently required. These are quite um, old books and some of my favorites. So Put um, Tunnel in the Sky, and the author to this was Robert Heinlein. And I have no idea when this was published. Let's just put a dummy date. This 
This is a science fiction book. So that's that book. Let's add another one. This one is my favorite book of all time. Oh, get it right. I have no idea when this was published either. So let's just say, I think it was the 80s sometime. Go to that. And let's say it was um, 14th of May. And it is science fiction, but we could have chosen something else. And let's add one more book. And this one is also another one of my one of my absolute favorites. Part of a series. Billy Pose Farmer. And I have no idea when this was published either. I guess I could I'm looking at the book now. I guess I could just read the book, but it really doesn't matter. Let's say 1975, September 1st. And this is also science fiction. I don't think this field is actually resetting, but this is something that we probably need to do on our add button. Just reset our drop down. That's fine. Um, so that's our three records. And then, like I said, we're working with this in memory. I could just go, well, wait a second. I don't actually want to add this particular tunnel in the sky. I just want to add robots of dawn and scattered bodies go. So let's kill that one. So we've just got Robots of Dawn and Scattered Bodies Go, and that I'm happy with. Let's click Save. And that's us committed to our data source. Now, the other thing I probably would have been nice to do is to reset this gallery. So let's just quick quickly take a look at our data source first. And we can see both of our records have saved um, in one hit, which is fantastic. So the couple of things that we want to do here on our collection is to do an extra bit of tidy up here is to do a clear on our data input. So that will give us a clean input form or clear clean input repeating section so we can keep going after we've done our submit. If we go back We'll just get rid of these and uh, I'll add a new one. And this time I'll add, I'll add the Robert Heinlein book and we want to save that. And it's gone away and saved. And we've got a clear input slate now. If we go to our data source, just to double check that we'll hit refresh data and we've got our new record. So that's how we put together a simple to use repeating section interface and submit multiple records to a data source. Hi guys, it's me at the end to remind you to hit the like button if you like this video and to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content on this channel. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.